Morning ladies and gentlemen, Bridge Warrior here. Hope you guys are doing well. I hope you had a super awesome weekend as well. So may I ask you, did you take time out to read? Remember, we must read the word. This is a must, must, must. We must study the word. And we know it is late on planet Earth. We are running out of time. And we know the solution is Jesus Christ. And he stayed, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this beautiful day. Father God, I give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. Father God, right now, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you will be increased. Allow the Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister Loretta, scripture reading is coming from Hebrews 11, verses 1. Hebrews 11, verses 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. Okay, so let's get into through faith alone, through faith alone. Many young men are sent forth to labor who do not understand the plan of salvation and what true conversion is. In fact, they need to be converted. We need to be enlightened on this point. And the ministers need to be educated to dwell more particularly upon the subjects which explain true conversion. All who are baptized are to give evidence that they have been converted. There is not a point that needs to be dwelt upon more earnestly, repeatedly, more frequently, or established more firmly in the minds of all than the, imp the, import the impossibilities of falling man meriting anything by his own best good works. Salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Let me repeat that. There is not a point that needs to be dwelt more upon earnestly, repeated, repeated more frequently, or established more firmly in the minds of all than the impossibilities of fallen men meriting anything by his own best works. Salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. When the question is investigated, we are pain to the heart to see the trivial are the marks of those who ought to understand the mysteries of godliness. They speak so unguardedly of the true idea of our brethren who profess to believe the truth and teach the truth. They come far short of the real facts as they have been laid upon, let me go back. They come far short of the real facts as they have been laid open before me. The enemy has been entangled their mind in the midst and fog of earthliness, and it seems so ingrained into their understanding that it has become a part of their faith and character. It is only a new conversion that can change them and cause them to give up their false ideas. For this is just what they are shown to me to be. They cling to them as a drowning man clings to life preserver to keep them from sinking and making shipwreck of faith. Christ has given me words to speak. You must be born again else you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me repeat that. Christ has given me words to speak. You must be born again, else you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, all who have the right understanding of this matter should put away their controversial spirit and seek the Lord with all their hearts. Then they will find Christ and can give distinctive character to their religious experience. They should keep this matter, the simplicity of true godliness, distinctly before the people 
in every discourse, meaning every discussion. This will come home to the heart of every hungering, thirsty soul who is longing to come into an assurance of hope and faith as perfect trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the subject be made distinct and plain that it is not possible to affect anything in our standing before God or in the gift of God to us to creatures merit. Should faith and works purchase the gift of salvation for anyone, then the creator is under obligation to the creature. Let me repeat this. Should faith and works purchase the gift of salvation for anyone, then the creator is under the obligation to the creature. Here is an opportunity for falsehood to be accepted as truth. If any man can merit salvation by anything that he may do, then he is in the same position as the Catholic to do pen penance for his sin, meaning atonement. Uh, so let's, let's put that word atonement in there. So let's go back. If any man can merit salvation by anything he may do, then he is in the same position as the Catholic to do atonement for his sin. Salvation, then, is part, part, partly of death, but may we earn as wages. Should I go back? Let me go back. Salvation, then, is partly of debt that may be earned as wages. If men cannot, by any of his good works, merit salvation, then it must be wholly of grace, meaning completely of grace, received by man as, as a sinner because he received and believes in Jesus. It is completely a free gift. Justification by faith is placed be, beyond con, uh, controversy. Justification by faith is placed beyond controversy, and all this controversy is ended. As soon as the matter is settled, that the merits of fallen man in his good works can never procure, can never obtain eternal life for himself. So that concludes my topic today, through faith alone. So on tomorrow, we're going to go into uh, holy, meaning uh, obtaining of grace. Holy of grace. That will be our topic for tomorrow. So let me drink some water. Okay. So here is the devotion. And the topic, the title is, Christ is our only hope. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened upon the eyes of him that whom we have to do. And this is coming from uh, Hebrews 4.13. Uh, let me repeat this. There, neither is there any creatures that is not manifested in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hebrews 4.13. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I ask you to continue to take full control, calm my mind and my spirit. And I thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay. The Lord is a God of knowledge. In his words, he is represented as weigh, weighing man, the development of character and all their motive, whether they be good or evil. Hannah, the mother of Samuel, Samuel, the child granted her by God in answer to her earnest entreated says, The Lord is good of knowledge, and by him actions are weighted. Or we can say actions are weighed. And this is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 3. David declared, Men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. 
to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. And this is coming from Psalms uh, 62 verses 9. Isaiah says, Thou most upright, thus wait the path of the just. Isaiah 26, 7. Uh, uh, Solomon writes, All the ways of man are are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. Proverbs 16, 2. It is for the eternal interest of everyone to search his own heart and to improve every God-given faculties. There are many important lessons for each to learn. Let all remember that there is not a motive in the heart of any man that the Lord does not clearly see. The motive of each one are weighed, are weighed as carefully as if the destiny, the destiny of human agency depended upon his hit upon this one result. Let me go back. The motive of each one are weighed as carefully as if the destiny of human agent depending upon this one result. We need a connection with divine power that we may have an interest of clear light and an understanding of how to reason from cause to effect. We need to have the power of the understanding cultivated by our being partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruptions that is in the world through lust. Let us each one consider carefully the solemn truth. God in heaven is true, and there is not a design, however intricate, not a motive, however carefully hidden, that he does not clearly understand. He reads the secret devising of every heart. Men may plan out crooked actions for the future, thinking that God does not understand, but in that great day, when the books are opened and every man is judged by the things written in the books, those actions will appear as they are. There is no one, there is no one, however earnestly, he may be striving to do his best, who can say, I have no sin. Let me repeat that. There is no one, However earnestly he may be striving to do his best, who can say, I have no sin? He who would say this would be under a dangerous deception. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. This is coming from 1 John uh, verses 1, no, 1 John chapter 1 verses 8. How then can we escape the charge? Thou art weight in the balance and art found wanting. We are to look to Christ at infinite cost. He is the covenant to our representative in the heavenly court course. In the heavenly court. Let me go back. At infinite cost. He has covenanted to be to be our representative in the heavenly courts, our advocate before God. So that concludes my devotion. Christ is our only hope. So if any of us are planning to get to heaven, my sister and brother, we all have to go through the door, and the door is Jesus Christ in order to make it into heaven. So those individuals that state that, they don't believe in Jesus Christ, well, my sister, my brother, that's the only way that we'll be able uh, to make it into heaven, by believing and allowing Jesus to take full control of our lives. Now remember, he is the one that died for us, and he is the one that reclaimed us back to the Father. So we have to go through Jesus Christ. So we have to have the love of Jesus. He is our example. He is our perfect example. So when we state that we are, can be uh, godly, uh, we can live a holy life, 
It's only through Jesus Christ because we surrender our life and we allow him to take full control. So when we are state that we, you know, we have done something that was not pleasing or acceptable in the Lord's sight, we can go to the Lord. Now, first of all, we go to the person, get it right. And then we come to the Lord and ask him to cleanse us, to purify us. So as we continue doing that, my sister, my brother, but not only that, continue to confess but we also have to forsake whatever that is you know whether you are sleeping or sleeping around or or drinking and smoking um and destroying your body overeat all those things my sister my brother same sex marriage and all that other stuff my sister and brother that is not of god so we need to um come to understanding that it's not our standard but it's his standard that we have to reach. He is not uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's not going to bow down to, to our standard. We are the ones that have to reach up to his standard in order to make it in. And we cannot do any of this stuff by ourselves because even coming, coming to repentance is the Holy Spirit that draws us to that point. So it is nothing. All we're doing is surrendering our life and allow the Holy Spirit to take full control. So it's not us that's doing it, but the Holy Spirit is doing it through us. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So here is my um, my hymn. Boy, 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 let me drink some more water. And this is fate of our fathers. Fate of our fathers, living still in spite of dungeon, fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy. Whenever we hear the glorious word, fate of our fathers, holy fate, we will be true to thee till death. Our fathers chain in prison, dark. We're still in hearts and conscience free. How sweet would be thy children's fate if they, like them, would die for thee. Fate of our fathers, holy fate. We will be true to thee till death. Here's the last verse. Fate of our fathers, we will love both friends and foe in all our strife and preach thee to as love knows how, by kindly words and uh, virtuous life, fate of our Father's holy fate, we will be true to thee till death. My sister, my brother, we all will have to make a choice sooner than later whether you're going to be on God's side or Satan's side. There's only two choices. There's no middle, middle, middle ground. You're either going to choose God's side or you're going to choose Satan's side. And I hope and pray that you have made your calling and election sure, standing on the winning team. And that is God's side. Yes, we Christians, we fall back. We fall down. Or we can say we believers, we fall down. Yes, we make mistakes. Yes, but we do not wallow in our mistakes. We get back up. We confess our faults to one another. We confess our sins only to God, not to my priest, my, not to my the priest or the pastor, pastor's wife or the bishop and all these other. No, no, no. You take it only to God because He is the only one that for, can forgive us. But not only does He forgive us, He He wipe it clean. It's just like He's never happened. It's like He throw it to the bottom of the ocean. So we as individuals don't need to be deep sea diver and go back and bring that stuff up that God has forgiving us. I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes I, I ask the Lord to forgive me and I know he has, but then sometimes your mind start playing games with you, right? And you start thinking about, you know what? I did this. I should have done this. And you know what? I, you know, I was not, I don't know what I was thinking, right? That's a Satan bringing that stuff back, my sister and brother. So you have to know who is speaking to you at, at the time. And you just say, get thee behind me, Satan, right? Because God has already forgiven you. So what we did like yesterday, we cannot go back yesterday and uh, do anything. But I mean, if we have said something to someone, we can go ahead and get that right, right? But I'm saying we cannot go back and re repeat, not repeat, not repeat. But we cannot go back and uh, redo 
The only thing we can do is go to the person, get it right, and then we go to the Lord and ask Him to forgive us. And when we do that, my sister and brother, we have to believe that God, the Father, He has already, He wiped it just clean. He's clean, clean, clean. You are a new person. You are a new creature because you have asked Him to forgive you. And we know right now Jesus is in the most holy place interceding on our behalf. He's our high priest. He's standing in that place right now. And we know as we put our, as we uh, send our prayers up, my sister, my brother, ask him to cleanse us, to purify us. He is doing that. He is cleansing the sanctuary like the high priest back in the Bible time. That's where he is right now. So we have to make sure, my sister, my brother, that as we continue to lift up other individuals, as we continue to intercede on others' behalf, knowing that God hears our prayer and he's working on our behalf. But we also have to make sure that we are standing on the promises. We are reading and studying the word for, for ourselves, Not because Burdell says so-and-so, not because your pastor says so-and-so, but because you have studied the word for yourself and you know beyond of a shadow of a doubt, thus said the Lord. That is the only way that you are going to be able to stand. That's the only way that I will be able to stand based on my relationship with the Lord, based on my intimate relationship with, with the Lord, based on my deep relationship with the Lord. That is the only way we're going to be able to make it. I hope that's clear. It's not by anything that we have done, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for us and what he continued to do on our behalf. But here's the thing. He will not be as as a high priest for too long so once he moved from that place my sister and brother and he said it is done then it is finished so we so whether you have the lord in your heart or you don't everything will be settled my sister and brother so we want to make sure you need to make sure that you are standing on the winning team I have to make sure that I'm standing on the winning team, meaning that I'm examining myself moment by moment, not at the end of the day, moment by moment, and seeing if there's anything in me that is not of God. We're asking him to cleanse us, to purify us, right? So when God the Father sees us, he doesn't see our sins, but he sees that we are covered with the blood of Jesus. It's because we have confessed our sins. Not only that, we have forsaken the sins my sister, my brother, well, that's very clear. We have to not only confess, but we have to forsake the sin. So the only way we're going to do that is asking the Lord for the power and the strength to do that. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you for this message, Father God. I thank you that you did not leave me here by myself, Father God. We give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. Father God, I thank you for my sister, my brother, that stopped by here today. Father God, there's some financial uh, issues that's going on. There's some relationship issues, Father God. There's so many things going on, Father God. Someone right now is about to give up, Father God. Father God, so we ask, ask you to intervene on their behalf, Father God. Send your holy uh, angel Father God, to intercede. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you for intervening on our behalf. We forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. Father God, if we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you will wash us and make us whiter than snow. And once you have done that, Father God, we ask you that you will give us the power, that you give us the strength that we need Father God, to do what is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And we forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. I tell you, my sister, my brother. Boy, my throat. Okay, so thank you guys so much for stopping by. So if this was a blessing to you, can you hit the like button? Uh, can you make a comment? Uh, what you doing? Maybe what scripture have you read? Uh, what is the Lord doing on your behalf? Then you can also hit the share button. Then you can follow me over on YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, you can hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so when my video goes up, you'll be the first to notify. Then on both places, Facebook or YouTube, you can also give me a thumbs up, a thumbs up. And you guys can make comments there. And my sister and brother, I thank you. I thank you. I, I thank you and I appreciate you. So then, what do I say? May I have a hug? So here we go. A hug, hug, hug. Hug, hug, hug. Okay, here we go. One, two, 
three. My sister and brother, we all have to make sure that we are standing on the winning team, okay? So make sure if someone have not hugged you, maybe, I mean, most people not hugging these days, right? Even in your family, it's like, nope, 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 you know? So even with that, my sister and brother, you can give yourself a good, a big hug, right? There's nothing like giving yourself a big hug. So you consider yourself hugged today, my sister and brother. So until then... Uh, be blessed and take care. I love you. I love you and I appreciate you. May God continue to richly bless you and your family. Until then, take care.